Okay. Feeling good? Feeling good. Mm -hmm. Not as good as I can feel, I guess. <laughs> Are you feeling good about launching this guy? Not really, especially with this clutch, but <laughs> whatever. All right, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. We all know that if you want to go faster, you need James. But if that's true, then why are Miatas so quick at track days? Why can Takami beat a GTR in the downhill and a Corolla? Could it be that less weight is more important than more power? Well, we're going to look at how each affects a car's performance and find out if it's better to be featherweight or powerhouse. I'm a power bottom. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> A big thanks to Off The Record for sponsoring today's video. July 4th, it's known for four things. Fireworks, America, speeding tickets, and double the fireworks. Now, were you one of the many that had fun, but kaboom, a speeding ticket blew up your holiday? Well, don't worry, because Off The Record is here to help save you money and your driving record. With a 97% success rate, Off The Record offers a network of attorneys to fight your ticket and will even give you a refund if they can't reduce or keep it off your record entirely. So get back to enjoying your summer and register now. Use code DONUT and you'll save 10% off your first ticket at offtherecord.com slash donut. Weight and horsepower. When you think about it, there are actually just two forces. Weight is the downward force of gravity on a car as determined by its mass, and horsepower is a measurement of work produced by the engine, which is just a force applied over a specific distance over a certain amount of time. One horsepower is the amount of work it takes 3,300 pounds to go one foot in one minute, or an average 3,300 pound car to go one foot in six seconds. If you play around with the variables on either side of that equation, it's easy to see that you can go further or faster with more power or less weight. Now on the surface, the relationship between power and weight is pretty straightforward. Every car has a constant weight and a peak power. The ratio of the two is called the power to weight ratio. James, he did a D-list on cars with interesting power to weight ratios a while back. You should check it out after you watch this video. But for those who haven't watched it, the power to weight ratio works like this. Since it's expressed as weight over power, the lower the number, the better the ratio. Cars that are really heavy and don't have a lot of horsepower have a high power to weight ratio. And cars with lots of power that are also really lightweight have a low power to weight ratio. And in the middle, you have cars that maybe have one or the other. For example, a Lotus Exige and a current Mustang GT have very different specs in terms of horsepower and weight, but their power to weight ratios are about the same. So does that mean that they're as fast as each other? Well, hold on a second. It's a little trickier than that. If you were looking at a drag race, then sure, equal power to weight ratios would yield similar performance. But other racing disciplines are different. On a road course, your horsepower doesn't help when you're braking or cornering. You can't benefit from your horsepower all the time. Weight, on the other hand, it's different. It's constant. It doesn't change with application. I wish it did. Could you imagine being all skinny whenever you wanted, but then someone tries to kidnap you because you're the son of a diplomat and then boom. Now you're a 600 pound guy. Try to move me now, you suckers. Besides, my rich dad doesn't have kidnapping shirts. You're not gonna get anything from me. Then they cut your tongue off and cut your fingers off and then solder. Anyway, so since weight is always a factor and horsepower is only sometimes a factor, that means weight is better, right? Right, is that right? Actually, we're not done yet. Back when we did our episode on why it's almost impossible to go a thousand miles per hour, we talked about wind resistance and the drag created from punching through air as you drive along. Now this drag increases quadratically with speed. It's not exponential growth. I know people throw that term around like it's quadratic growth. Okay, never mind. But that force is the square of the speed. The mass of the car, it isn't increasing, but the weight of the car is increasing due to the air pressing down on top of it. And that can only be overcome by more horsepower. At high speeds, weight begins to matter less and less. See, what's really affecting the car isn't so much the weight as it is the inertia. Inertia is an object's resistance to change in acceleration, and that is directly tied to an object's weight. But once an object is already in motion, the effect of inertia is minimal. As a car accelerates, its acceleration tapers off. The most G-force is created 
right at the initial point of acceleration. And after that, everything begins to equalize as the car's mass begins to move. This is why you can't do a burnout when you're rolling along at 50 miles per hour. Your car has much less acceleration and torque than it does when it's at a standstill. Which actually brings me to my next point and the limiting factor for both weight and horsepower. And that is your contact patch. That's your tires. It's just a cool way to say tires. You're like, hey, I got a big contact patch. You're like, oh, sick, dude. I got a tiny contact patch. And you're like, hey, dude, it's fine, man. I love all tire shapes. Tires are universal, man. You know, all shapes and sizes, they're all beautiful. They all smell good. And we could get into a long discussion about tires, but for the purposes of today, all you need to know is that a tire has a certain threshold, an amount of force that if you push beyond that, the tire's gonna slip. This is the coefficient of static friction. Every material has two friction coefficients. You got your static friction, relates to the amount of force needed to move it. You got your kinetic friction or sliding friction, which is how much force is needed to keep it moving once it's already moving. The coefficient of kinetic friction is always lower than the coefficient of static friction. If you've ever pushed a heavy piece of furniture or your mom and it all of a sudden jerked forward, that's you overcoming the coefficient of static friction and moving into the realm of kinetic friction. Now for tires, they're in static contact with the ground. The wheels, they roll to keep the tire in asphalt in constant static friction territory. Now for the average road tire, the coefficient of static friction is 0.7. That means that to stick to the ground, a tire can only handle seven tenths the force of the weight that's acting on it. In a 4,000 pound car with perfect weight distribution, each tire would have 1,000 pounds of force pushing it into the ground and therefore could only handle 700 pounds of force before the tire slipped. This is why the tires are a limiting factor. If you're braking heavily, the weight of the car goes to the front two tires. They now have the force of the inertia of the car acting on them. The more the car weighs, the more force you're asking those two front tires to handle. Eventually, you can have too much weight for the tires. And on the power side, you can have too much power for the tires. Rear wheel drive cars with too much power can have problems getting on the power too early out of a corner because their weight is on one side and delivering more force to that outside wheel, they'll send you into a nice little spin. I did this one time and my catfish Camaro at Buttonwill. And Kanan loved to show people how I messed up at the track one day. So to recap, mass is a constant of the car which only affects the car during changes in motion, accelerating, decelerating, and changes of direction. Horsepower only affects the car during acceleration. Different types of racing favor the two sides of the power to weight ratio. A high horsepower V8 might be really good at an oval track, but a lightweight hatchback might be good at autocross. Now, there are plenty of other things that affect a car's speed on track. You got your suspension setup, tire choice, mechanical grip, aerodynamics, gearing, power band, and not to mention driver ability. But now we've got a better understanding of power and weight's relation to performance. What's that? You want proof of that? Oh, I gotcha, no problemo. So to help demonstrate a practical example of this, we're out here in the middle of nowhere and we got two very fancy cars. We have my lovely Catfish Camaro and we have our rider Joey Rasool's Yaris. So we got both of these cars weighed and then we went down to our buddies at EF1 Tuning where Richard dynoed both cars so we could get an accurate horsepower to weight ratio. So my catfish has a better horsepower to weight ratio. So in a functional test, say from zero to 60, it's gonna do better than the Yaris. But all that power is irrelevant when you're going from 60 to zero in a braking test where mass matters most. And that's where the Yaris is gonna be the catfish. So we came out here today to test if that really is the case. You ready? Let's do it. All right. All right. God, it's, it's not a total death trap. Damn. <laughs> I feel like I just broke something. All right, here we go. Timer set. All right. You ready? Yeah, you get, yep, on you. Give me, give me, give me that count. Okay. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two, one, go.
I'm actually I'm actually getting nervous now because uh, he's got he's got big front calipers. All right, right there. Park it. Park it. All right. Oh, poor little guy. So we're doing our 60 to zero test. This is where my Camaro stopped. Joey just went out. He's gonna do his run. If we did this right, Joey's car is gonna stop sooner than my car. It weighs less, so it has less mass to stop. But we'll see. Ooh Look at that. Look at that. I guess it goes to show that uh, power's not always important. Yes, more power, baby, but also less weight, baby. In practice, weight and power are only two factors among many that go into a properly set up car. Ideally, you always want more power and less weight, but knowing what each does to a car is important for understanding how it will react on the track and on the road. All I know is, is that my catfish is freaking sick looking, man. Who's in Southern California and wants to go do a track day with me? I gotta get my catfish out there more. I gotta do better. I gotta be a better driver. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Follow us here at Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram, at Jeremiah Burton. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next week, bye for now.